Uh, let me just spend a few minutes here talking about uh, uh, COVID-19, otherwise known as the novel coronavirus, new coronavirus, and uh, our church's response to it. Uh, let me first say some things that probably most of you know if you've kept up with the news cycle, uh, but just make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, if, if, uh, if a week ago you may have felt that the, that the nation was not taking COVID-19 seriously enough, certainly things have, have kicked up a notch. Uh, you know, whether it will be sufficient, obviously that remains to be seen. But things have definitely, there's been a definite uptick. For instance, uh, uh, Maryland has declared a state of emergency and uh, any uh, gatherings, and, and keep in mind, what I'm gonna share with you is as of this morning, late last night. So if I miss something and you know something different than I do, feel free to raise your hand because this is an evolving situation. Uh, it's illegal in Maryland right now to have a gathering over 250 people. Uh, obviously, that's affected some of our larger churches up there. Uh, and so there are many, many, many of our churches, uh, not just in Maryland, but across the country uh, and around the world that are meeting electronically uh, via the live stream. Uh, that is always an option for you. And if in the weeks and months ahead, if you feel like you just don't feel comfortable coming to church because of the risk of uh, infection, uh, if you are not feeling well, if there's something that, that's uh, wrong with your health and you're not sure what it is, uh, and we prefer that you not pass it on, you too uh, can enjoy our worship services online. Uh, Virginia has also declared a state of emergency. However, at least as of this morning, there was not a specific uh, threshold beyond which you cannot meet in a public gathering. Uh, so uh, Governor Northam has not yet decided to do that. Obviously, that could change at any moment. Uh, the threshold seems to be, the lowest that I've heard uh, is 100 uh, in various places. Now, I could be wrong about that. I've heard, so I heard uh, uh, not too long ago, a couple hours ago, someone said that there was a rumor, there's one state that said, zero social gatherings. You cannot meet for a birthday party, uh, that type of a thing. I don't know how you enforce that, but uh, anyway, uh, we do, speaking of these things, this is probably as good a time as any to interject it. Getting good information, you may have noticed, is difficult. Uh, it is very difficult. And the reason for that is because this is new and it's scary for a lot of people and so it's very easy to pick up on a rumor and claim that it is indeed fact. Unfortunately, sometimes even when you read something online from a reputable news source, it can change very rapidly. And so what do we do? The answer is we do the best we can. We do the best that we can. Uh, if you go to the New Market Church website and you look on the right hand side there, there is a COVID-19 uh, information uh, set of links there. And it will take you, uh, at this point, to two things. Uh, first of all, there is a letter that I emailed out to the church family uh, that talked about our church's response to the coronavirus. How many of you did not receive that? Can I pass one of these hard copies to you right now? Let's see, yes, if you wouldn't mind, uh, raised hand. Uh, if you are not on our email list, I know that some of you do not have email, and so I'll address that in just a moment, but if you did not receive an email from me this week, uh, and you have email access, please call the church office on Monday. We really do want you to be engaged. We want you to be getting the latest updates because of the amount of activities that happen here on our campus. Uh, if you do not have email, uh, would you please, as soon as you can, partner with someone who does? Okay, so even today, uh, find somebody that does have email and say to them, if we get something from the church or from the campus regarding coronavirus and what we're doing, if meetings are canceled, etc., would you please let me know? Okay, because unfortunately, uh, we are not equipped at the church to be able to come individually to your house uh, and deliver information, particularly with a situation like this that is evolving so quickly. So we are going to stick with email. That's gonna be the fastest way to get information out. If you do not have email, find somebody that can get you the information uh, from email in a timely fashion. At this point, we will not be using the phone tree. The phone tree uh, has not been used for quite some time. Uh, it, is, it is very difficult uh, to make sure, to be honest, email gets far more people than our phone tree does. And there, I'm not gonna go into all the technical issues for that, but uh, at this point, we're not using the phone tree, so please partner with someone who does have email. Uh, in our own state, uh, we have two schools on this campus. Uh, Governor North Northrum has said that school cannot be in session, K-12 schools cannot be in session at least through the 27th, March 27th, that's a Friday. And so at the earliest, if it were possible for schools to be back in session, it would be the following Monday, which would be the 30th. 
However, uh, and, and please keep in mind here, I'm not giving you any sort of official announcement from either school because neither school has an official announcement to make yet at this point. Uh, is it likely that we will have online classes of some sort for our students? Yeah, I think so. I think it's fair to say that it's likely. Uh, but there has not been an official decision made about that, and uh, please do not leave here and say that there has been one. Uh, I know that both principals are on top of this and diligently working uh, to make certain that students' education can continue uh, at the maximum level uh, with all the challenges that we have. Uh, the letter that I sent to you uh, does have uh, the reminders of the basics. You've heard them all. Let me just reiterate them. Uh, if you want to shake someone's hand at this stage right now, at this particular time at 11 a.m. on this Sabbath morning, uh, if you reach out to shake my hand, I'll probably shake it back, but just remember you're shaking hands with everybody else that I shook hands with prior to that, okay? Uh, so uh, you have been warned, and uh, let's do be diligent. The difficulty with this, and here's where we get to a little bit of Adventist theology, and I'm not going to go too deep into this at this point, but uh, let, let me just share this. There's two things in play when it comes to preventative measures. One is the obvious one, health. Uh, you may be in fine fettle, but there could be somebody who does not have the same health that you do uh, and could be compromised by you being a carrier. Uh, as you've, I'm sure you've heard in the news, you don't necessarily have to show any symptoms in order to be a carrier for the virus. Uh, so please keep that in mind. But secondly, and this is the one that's at least, I'm kind of amazed it's still been missed, but so I want to get it out there. There is definitely a PR issue here. If, for instance, uh, uh, if, it's, if it becomes further, more strongly suggested that public gatherings not take place and we continue to do so, and God forbid there would be an outbreak in Newmarket, guess who they will blame? It'll be those Adventists that are considering, you know, you know Never mind what the governor of the rest of the state says, we're gonna keep on doing our thing. Uh, at this stage in the game, when there is not a moral issue in play, in other words, they are not threatening to take our Sabbath away, okay, we need to obey the king. That's what the Bible tells us to do, to, to pay attention to state laws, and uh, we need to be a light to those around us. So, let us avoid the PR nightmare of being known as the church that caused damage uh, in Newmarket. So, uh, keep those two things in mind, please, as you seek to do these basic preventative measures.